My name is Mark Polk and this is my RV garage. I got bit by the RV bug when I was 15 years old and still have it today. I started in this industry washing campers and since that time I've helped educate over a quarter million RVers on how to safely and properly use and maintain their RV. My favorite pastimes are RVs, muscle cars, and motorcycles. Welcome to my RV garage. This episode is sponsored by Camping World, KOA, Pellin Enterprises, and Explore RV Insurance. Hey Tyler, look here. We we just got our uh, our black water holding tank and our gray water holding tank today. And the other day, I actually got the uh, combination shower and toilet pan that's going to go in the bathroom. Now, do you remember when we bought the trailer, all it had in the bathroom was a toilet? Yeah. Well, that toilet only had like a five-gallon holding tank, which, and it didn't even have a gray tank. This is the gray tank. So what I did was I, I was concerned about weights, but I got, I think this is a 16-gallon black tank, and that's a nine-gallon uh, gray tank for the kitchen sink. You know what? Let me show you something. Come here. It's probably easier to show you rather than try to explain it. When you when someone buys a new RV, they they normally have a black water holding tank that's just for the toilet. Then they have a gray water tank that all the sinks and the shower drain into. Okay. On some small RVs, sometimes a manufacturer will combine the toilet and the shower and and have it drain into the black tank and then they'll use the gray tank for one of the sinks. So is that what we're doing? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to take that black tank and it's 16 gallons. We're going to combine the shower and the toilet into it and then we're going to use a really small gray tank and just hook it up for the kitchen sink. Okay, our, basically our bathroom is right here, all right? Yeah. The shower is going to be here and the toilet's going to be here. So we're going to want the, the drain to be up front here where we have some room to do some plumbing. So the tank would be positioned like this. The shower is going to drain somewhere in this area and the toilet's going to drain somewhere in this area. So how are we going to get it draining from both sides in one tank? We have to actually cut holes in this for the shower and for the toilet and then we have to position it exactly right so it'll drain into the tank. Okay. Okay, we're getting ready to install our black water holding tank and our gray water holding tank in the old Yellowstone trailer, which means we're going to be plumbing our shower pan and toilet and, of course, our kitchen sink. Whenever you're plumbing a sink or a shower in an RV, you need to use a P-trap to prevent gases and odors from the holding tanks coming up and entering the RV through the way of the drain. Now, with the shower pan, I have a very limited amount of space between the floor and the bottom of the trailer. I don't have enough room to put a P-trap, and I'd like to save a little bit of room under the kitchen cabinet. So what I've discovered is a product called the HEP VO valve. What this is, is it substitutes for a P-trap. It allows the water to go down the drain, but it doesn't allow any gases or odors to come back up into the RV. The neat thing about the HEPVO is you can install it in a vertical position or in a horizontal position. So when we're talking about plumbing the shower pan, I only have a limited amount of space like I mentioned a moment ago, so this HEPVO valve is going to work perfect. And when it comes to our kitchen sink, I'll be able to install the HEPVO valve, put a T in, go to my vent pipe, and run the other side to the holding tank. So this is a really cool product and it's going to save me a ton of work from trying to figure out how to raise the shower pan and put a P-trap in there. The other day I was explaining to Tyler where we're going to mount the black water holding tank for the toilet and shower. Today's the day that I actually want to mount the tank, so I've got a couple concerns I want to address. And uh, Number one, I want to make sure that I can secure the tank to something solid so it can support the weight once it's got water and content in the tank. And number two, I want to make sure that I make my, my holes for the drain tank exactly where they're going to go into the tank so we don't have a problem when we mount the toilet and install the shower drain. So right now, I'm getting some measurements. I'm going to drill a pilot hole through the floor 
so I can see where I want to locate the tank. Then once the tank's in place, we can actually drill into the tank and that'll be the center hole for the shower drain in the toilet. Okay, that should be our the center for the shower drain. And then we made some measurements over here, which should be the center for our toilet. So those two holes are going to tell me or show me where I need to locate the tank underneath. And then I can look for some good areas to secure the tank to from the bottom to support that weight we were talking about. Okay, this is a view from underneath, and uh, we've got our, this is our hole that I just drilled, this is the one for the toilet, and back here is the one for the shower. Okay, this is the holding tank that we're going to use for the toilet and the shower. And uh, what we have here, we have some flex fittings, they're made of rubber, and you can see they have a groove, and what we're going to do is we're going to use a hole saw. We already have our pre-drilled holes. We're going to use a hole saw to make the correct size opening. Then we're going to put some silicone in the groove and work these fittings into the tank so they seal. Now we have three fittings here. Of course the three inch one is for the toilet. Then we've got a couple inch and a half uh, flex fittings. One's going to be for the shower drain and one's going to be for our vent. Once these fittings are in place it should be pretty easy to mount everything to the tank. Okay, we're ready to plumb our uh, shower drain into our black water holding tank and we mentioned a moment ago when we were working on the kitchen sink that it, rather than using a P-trap we were going to use a HEPVIO valve. In this trailer we have a very limited amount of space between the shower pan and the bottom of the trailer floor. We can install the HEPVIO valve horizontally and it'll fit right in the amount of space we have and this will prevent any gases or odors from coming back up from the black tank into the RV. Okay, we have our black water holding tank installed and we're going to use that for the shower and the toilet and now we're getting ready to install our gray water holding tank. It's only a nine gallon tank, but it's only going to be for the kitchen sink, so it should work really well. Unfortunately, the area that I wanted to install it in is directly below the sink, but you'll see that the tire and the wheel well are going to get in my way. This trailer never had a gray water holding tank before, so this is all new. What we're going to have to do is install the gray water holding tank behind the tire and then we're going to have to run our drain line over to the black water tank and tie into it. No big deal, it'll work just fine. Okay, I mentioned just a moment ago that, that uh, where I really, my preference for installing the gray tank was directly below the sink but we weren't able to do that. So the drain pipe is actually going to come out the side of this kitchen cabinet and go directly into our holding tank. That should be the center. Okay, here's our hole we just drilled. Now we need, just need to make sure that it'll come down into the tank without any issues. It looks like it should work. OK, 
Okay, we've got our holding tank in place, and all I'm going to do is take a little bit of spray paint, put it on the pipe, put the pipe down through our hole in the floor, and that'll mark the tank where we want to put our flexible uh, fitting. Okay, all I'm going to do is take our pipe with the paint on it, put it down till it makes contact with the tank, spin it around a little bit. And there's where we need to make our hole. This is our uh, flexible fitting that we're going to put into the tank. So we're going to cut a hole, put some silicone in this groove, and then we're going to work that groove into the hole. And then that's where our drain will go in. So that's all there is to this. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to use 100% silicone. Just put a little bead inside our groove here. I had a little bit of this strapping left and it's going to work out good to secure the tank up against the floor of the trailer and all I'm doing is uh, trying to shape it, conform it to the shape of the tank. We've got our waste valves here and um, we're going to go ahead and connect it to the black water holding tank and then I'm going to plumb some lines from the gray tank tie into this and then uh, basically our, our gray and black water holding tanks will be completed except for inside uh, the, with the kitchen sink. When you're working with these you want to uh, make sure you use a cleaner. You want to make sure that there's no sharp edges from where you made your cuts that could catch like toilet paper or something when you're trying to drain the tanks. You just clean it up good and then you make sure you get the right cement to weld these two pieces of plastic together. We're going to put a thin layer of our cement on the pipe. We're going to go ahead and put a thin layer inside our three inch black tank valve. And then what you want to do is you want to put these together and give it a little twist. Make sure it's seated and within a matter of a few seconds, that, uh, that fitting is going to be in there for good. Okay, here's our black tank. We've got our uh, waste valves. We're going to make our connection. Just clean it good. Okay, same as before. We put some glue on our pipe fitting. And we're going to run a light coat of glue inside our tank. Now we want to get this in and get it positioned where we want our valve handles to be. That should do it right there. What we're going to have to do is come off of this gray uh, tank valve with an, an elbow probably another elbow shoot it back to our gray tank but that'll work good because it's only we're only dealing with water so those extra bends won't really cause a problem uh, like it might if it was a black tank now we want to make sure that we get our elbow positioned at the angle that we're looking for to get underneath the frame and everything before this sets up and what we'll probably do is come off of the 90 degree with the 45 to get the angle we want. What we're doing now is we're running our inch and a half drain line from our gray tank over to our waste valves. And what we want to do is we just want to make sure it's on a little bit of a slope, downward slope. And we're going to use this metal strapping to hang it to the frame to support the weight. That should be just about perfect. Okay, we're on our second piece of pipe. Clean so the glue will adhere. 
weld together. It's actually a welding process where these two pieces of plastic weld together. for a second. Okay, I mentioned a moment ago that we're going to be using the HEP VO valve to plumb the kitchen sink and the shower pan. Here's our kitchen sink area. What we're going to do is we're going to, of course, place our sink in. We're going to tie into the HEP VO valve and run it horizontally back. And then right here where I've got some space to work, I'm going to branch off with the T and go to my gray water holding tank. And then I'm going to come from the other side and we're going to run our vent up through the roof. going to go ahead and uh, put our HEP VO valve on the kitchen sink drain while it's out. Notice these ribs, when you install a HEP VO valve, the ribs need to be facing down away from the drain. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tee off go to my gray water tank and go to the vent it's going to go up through the, the roof. All right, we're going to go ahead and use some liquid nail to set our countertop in place. making our final connection for our vent pipe and then the plumbing for the kitchen sinks finished and all we have to do is make our water line connections on the faucet. Tune in next time when Mark and Tyler install the toilet, a new shower enclosure, and put more of the Yellowstone interior back together. If you missed previous episodes of Mark's RV Garage, you can view all of them at www.rvvideosondemand.com. Today I want to show you how to install a window awning in six easy steps. It's really not that difficult and if you're a do-it-yourselfer it can be a fun RV project to tackle. Let's get right to it. When your awning arrives, unpack it and make sure all of the required parts are on hand. Step 1. Install the awning rail. Position and center the awning rail approximately 5 inches above the top of the window. 
Apply a caulking compound behind the awning rail before securing the rail with the screws provided. I use putty tape on the back of the awning rail. Step 2. Hang the awning. Secure the arms to the top casting with the bolts provided. Both arms are identical. Unroll enough fabric to slide the bead into the awning rail. If too much fabric is unrolled before you release the preset tension, there will not be the required amount of tension to properly roll the awning back up after use. Step 3. Install the bottom mounting bracket. Position the bottom mounting bracket so the top of the end cap is level with the opening of the awning rail. This ensures the awning shield will wrap up tightly. Mark the location of the bottom mounting bracket holes. If the brackets will be secured to a wood structure, drill four 1 8 inch diameter holes and secure the bottom brackets using four screws provided. If the brackets are only secured to the skin of the RV, Use a number 5 drill bit and secure the bottom mounting bracket using 3 16 by 1 inch Oscar rivets. Repeat on the other side. Apply caulking compound to screws or rivets. Step number 4. Release the preset tension. A and E window awning torsions are pre-wound at the factory. Remove the cotter pin that is holding factory preset tension. The cotter pin is in the roller tube end cap. Twist the roller tube as if on rolling the awning while pulling on the cotter pin. Caution: When cotter pins are removed, the springs are under tension. The awning will attempt to close. Keep your body and clothing clear of the hardware and roller tube. The awning tube should roll up snugly against the side of the vehicle. Step 5. Install the window strap hanger. After the roller tube assembly is mounted on the RV, open the awning to its full extension by pulling down on the pull strap. Center the strap in the awning, then move the loop of the pull strap toward the RV and under the window to locate the placement of the window strap hanger. Locate the strap hanger so that the top loop of the strap is engaged onto the hanger, allowing minor height adjustment of the awning. Mark the location and install the strap hanger with three screws or 3 16 by 1 inch Oscar rivets as required. Apply caulking compound to screws or rivets before inserting. Step 6. Center the window awning. For awnings with a metal weather shield, install the self-drilling screws into the awning rail immediately next to the metal hinge. Repeat this on the other side. To open the awning, pull the strap down to extend the awning, then hook the loop onto the hanger. To close the awning, remove the pull strap from the hanger. Do not let go of the strap. The window awning is under tension and can snap back against the side of the vehicle. Your awning installation is complete and ready to use. Window awnings are available at www.campingworld.com. To learn more about RV awning use, care, and maintenance, check out our awning DVD at www.rveducation101.com. At Explorer RV, we understand that a recreational vehicle is one of the biggest purchases you'll ever make. That's why we really take the time to discover what kind of insurance you require. Then we'll tailor a policy to that level of coverage. As your needs change over time, we'll check back to ensure your policy is still providing the value you're looking for. Choose the RV insurance experts. Choose Explorer RV. Time for another question and answer. Pete wrote, let me get right to the subject. Field mice, they love my motorhome. I have tried bounce distributed liberally about the interior, cotton soaked with peppermint oil, electronic sonic noise makers, and shake away inside and out. I have also used mouse traps with peanut butter and cheese and rodent poison provided by my Terminex technician. I realize that the traps and poison are attractors while the rest are supposed to be repellers and wonder if they are working against each other. So far, knock on wood, no water lines or electric insulation have been on the mouse menu. I do leave several old soft rags in the basement storage which they seem to be happy with. But I am out of airspeed and ideas and would welcome any advice or counsel you could provide. P.S. I really don't want to get a cat. Well, Pete, that's a good question and one that I get asked a lot. 
Mice can cause lots of costly damage to an RV, and I think anybody who stores their RV outside has tried most or all of the recommended solutions for keeping mice away from the RV. Before we had a garage, I was a firm believer in the tried and true mouse trap, but like you mentioned, the bait used in the trap usually attracts mice. A few fellow RVers have written to me with suggestions that I have not tried, but they swear by these products. One of the products is called the Rat Zapper, and I was told it does a good job without poison or messy cleanup. You just go to the RV periodically, and if the red light is flashing, it indicates there's a dead mouse. You can dispose of the mouse without handling it. The other product I was told about is called Fresh Cab Rodent Repeller, and it's an all-natural rodent repeller with a guarantee. Keep in mind that I have not personally tried these products, but if you would like more information, visit www.ratzapper.com and www.earth-kind.com. When you're doing a restoration project like this, it's important that you take into consideration what parts you'll need for the next stage of the restoration so the project doesn't come to a screeching halt in midstream. Some parts I've ordered have a projected ship date of a month after I put the order in. Remember the five P's. Proper planning prevents poor performance. In the military, we had six P's. I'll bet you can guess which one I left out. Sometimes it's nice to have a patio mat outside when you're camping. When selecting a patio mat for your RV, it's a good idea to size it according to the length of your patio awning. This way you maximize your outdoor patio living area. Our physical DVD training program remains strong, but with today's advanced technology, we are excited to introduce a new program for learning RVs the easy way. The program is called Go for the RV Gold. Go for the RV Gold is a self-paced, internet-based RV training program where you can learn about your RV in the comfort of your own home or RV without having to travel anywhere. The training program consists of three monthly RV training modules the RV Bronze Module, the RV Silver Module, and the RV Gold Module. The RV Bronze Module consists of course titles beginning with the basics, like the RV Water System, the RV LP Gas System, and the RV Electrical System. Upon completion of the RV Bronze Module, you graduate to the RV Silver Module and finally work your way to the RV Gold Module. The course material becomes more advanced as you progress through each stage. In each monthly course, you'll receive personal one-on-one -on -one video training from me, feature articles, RV tips, crossword puzzles, informative links pertaining to the monthly topic, a quiz, membership discounts, and much, much more. Go for the RV Gold is designed to be a fun, self-paced RV training program. Upon completion of the program, you will feel much more confident about what is required to properly and safely use and maintain your recreation vehicle and you will receive a certificate of completion too. You get all three months of training for less than $150. That's only $12.50 per RV course. You won't find this quality of RV training available anywhere at this low price. So what are you waiting for? Sign up today and go for the RV Gold. Just click on the link to sign up or visit www.goforthervgold.com. I received lots of great tips and I wish I had more copies of Microsoft Streets and Trips to give away, but unfortunately we only have one left. I tried to use tips that would be helpful to the viewing audience. The winner of the last copy of Microsoft Streets and Trips is Dan and Pat with this great tip. Mark, here's an idea that worked well for us. We didn't want to add a standard metal file cabinet to the RV, but we needed a way to store important papers and documents. Tossing them into a shoebox or drawer was not the answer. We found one of these storage cube ottomans for less than $40 and purchased a standard hanging file rack and files from the local stationery store. The hanging file rack can be adjusted to fit inside the cube and the files hung inside organize the documents. The top has two sides, one with a tray top and the other upholstered. 
We have an attractive piece of furniture that serves as a file storage, a coffee table, or a comfortable footrest, and the surface is easy clean vinyl. It's only 18 inches square, so it takes up very little space. The benefit of this particular model is that it included a smaller ottoman nestled inside the larger one. It works great to sit one of the grandchildren at while they enjoy a snack on the tray top of the larger cube. We have a total of less than $50 wrapped up in the whole thing. We have recently seen these units advertised as low as $25. Thanks for the great tip and keep an eye out in the mailbox for your copy of Microsoft Streets and Trips. The storage ottoman that Dan and Pat are referring to can be purchased online at Value City Furniture. Just type www.vcf.com in your browser. Once you're there, type Ottoman in the search box and you can get more information or purchase one for your own use.